Ladies and gentlemen, would you please take your seats? Thank you. We'll begin with the school song. Jesus, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to labour and not to seek to rest, to give of myself and not ask for a reward, except the reward of knowing that I am doing your will. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. It's customary to start a formal speech by addressing the most important people present. I'm sure you know the formula. One starts with royalty and then moves on to my lords, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> I propose to do the same, but at downside, we consider the most important people are the pupils. They are the reason that we are all here. Parents, families, staff and governors are all here in support of the young men and women who are finishing the school year and in many cases finishing their school career. So, pupils, parents, staff and governors, welcome to prize giving. This is the first time for three years that we've been able to return to a truly traditional format. Having said that, the lessons from the pandemic have not all been negative. 
We will be recording this event for others to watch online later. I spent many years working in the world of commerce and latterly in the discipline of marketing. In all that time, a huge amount of effort was expended in the search for and promotion of a USP. USP stands for Unique Selling Proposition, as I'm sure you all know. The ironic thing about it was that we never found a single selling proposition that was truly unique. Somewhere, someone else could make the same claim or better. What we concluded was that it was important to be distinctive, rather than to try and find some tiny facet of the offering that had a brief window of claiming uniqueness. Downside, fortunately, has distinctiveness in its DNA. It is a school that puts Christ at its centre. It is guided by the Benedictine ethos, by which I mean that we see it as our purpose to awaken and nurture a lifelong commitment to learning and growing. This principle is taken directly from the rule of St. Benedict. We do not see education as transactional and utilitarian. We welcome pupils of other faiths and none because the values inherent in the Benedictine tradition are an underpinning for one's whole life, whether Roman Catholic or not. Pupils may be present at Downside for a small portion of their lives, but we hope that Downside will be present as a light in their whole lives. Since the last prize giving in 2021, much has changed. The world has become much more used to dealing with COVID, even though it remains a challenge for many. We have seen large-scale international conflict in Europe for the first time in decades, and we see surging inflation at rates that have not been present since the 1970s and 80s. Despite so many challenges, there is much to be grateful for. And I would like to extend thanks first to the parents of pupils who have entrusted us with their education. I would next like to thank the staff who have done so much to work with and for the pupils, including all the support staff who may play a less glamorous role, but who are essential to the success of the school. The leadership team under Andrew Hobbs have provided an exemplary approach through a period of very rapid changes, and I am so grateful to them for all their efforts. I thank my fellow governors who have devoted a huge amount of unpaid time and effort to support the school. And in particular, I would like to thank and pay tribute to my predecessor, Giles Mercer, who stepped down as chair of governors in April. His calm wisdom has been hugely helpful to all of us, and I hope he will permit me to continue to draw on it. Lastly, the first and most important principle of a speech is, to paraphrase very badly Einstein, that it should be as brief as possible, but no briefer. Thank you. Hello. It doesn't feel very long since Steffi and I were hunched over a computer screen watching Nick Hobbs deliver his first and final speech at Prize Day last year, delivering it in the theatre to just the upper sixth and the rest of us, uh, as the rest of us were banished behind computer screens and iPads. Just how far we have now come. It is our great pleasure to welcome you all back to Downside for our first Prize Day in over two years. We will not labour the COVID point for long, as I'm sure you're all well aware of the great impact it had on the whole school community. However, I would like to highly commend everybody for the vigour and enthusiasm with which, with which you have all thrown yourselves back into school life. While Steffi and I often sounded like a broken record asking you to get involved in this and that, 
It was very satisfying to see that so many of you heeded that advice. This can most obviously be seen in the great sporting achievements of this year. And while it may sound cliche, we can honestly say that this, all the teams have conducted themselves excellently, often in trying situations, and have been true Benedictine ambassadors for the school. Sport got off to a cra cracking start this year, with the first 15 rugby teams smashing through their season, with only three defeats at the very end of the season. For a long time, Downside has boasted a strong rugby showing, facilitated by excellent staff and support for the players. And this can be seen in achievements of players beyond the school. And a huge con congratulation must be extended to Abdul Khalik Al Karim, who has been signed for Bar Senior Academy, and we wish him all the best. At the same time, the first 11 girls hockey team performed admirable in their matches, showing great development throughout the entire season. Boys hockey in the Lent term was dominated by the second team, who embarked on an unexpected but triumphant campaign of matches, winning all but two of their games. Both the first and second team showed great sportsmanship and determination in the, in the face of both defeat and victory, and were assets to the school. During that same term, the netball team embarked on, a, on, a, on their tour playing against Mount Kelly and Plymouth College, losing out on first place by just one point. We would also like to thank you for the increased support for girls' um, sport this year, with more spectators than ever turning up to cheer on the teams, undoubtedly spurting, spurring them on to victory. There have been many excellent, excellent cricketing weekends this term, with glorious sunshine beating down on our first 11. Following a tough first match against the Downside Wanderers, the team went on to a very enjoyable season, both for players and those of us watching from the comfort of the deck chairs. Their season was topped up with a tour to Ampleforth, which unfortunately resulted in a close Ampleforth win, but we'll blame that on the home advantage for that. As sport is such a large part of life at Downside, it is impossible for us to list every achievement and success, but we'd like to thank everyone who played in teams this year, whether that be rugby, hockey, tennis, netball, or one of the other many sports. For the sportsmanship you've displayed and your grace and regardless of, of, of school. This year, we've also been able to bring back live music and performances, both in the Abbey Church and in the theater. Early on in the year, we saw the long-awaited return of the in-person carol service, which wasn't able to take place last year. It was a display of great musical ability that was greatly enjoyed by the school, as well as many parents and OGs. This was followed up by the charity showcase, um, uh, which saw the performances of many, including the close harmony group, mixed chamber choir, concert band, and various other groups and soloists. They all performed marvelously whilst raising money for the Musical Instrument Fund. Beyond this, the theater has been in full swing, filled with the sounds of various productions, ranging from the first form to the upper sixth. The Michaelmas term saw the performance of The Changing Room by members of the first and third form. I think we can all agree that it is an entertaining and enjoyable watch. Rather than one main senior play this year, we instead had an evening of love, which consisted of both musical pieces, theatrical excerpts, and ballet performances, all centered around the theme of love. Many budding thespians gave admirable performances, and uh, while Stephanie and I may not be here to see next year's performance, we're sure it will be just as successful as its predecessors. As many of you heard this morning, the school's choirs offer a powerful enhancement of our worship during Mass, filling the Abbey with music ranging from medieval Gregorian chant to modern Mass settings. Whilst the music changes, the impact remains the same, and Mass in the Abbey Church would be both less poignant and enriching without it. Less enriching without it, therefore. <laughs> therefore, we'd like to thank both the choir, Miss McNamara and Mrs. Bevan, for all they have done for the choirs and the wider uh, school music. On a sadder note, the monks of the community of St. Gregory moved away from Downside to Buckfast this year. Having been a central pillar of Downside life over 200 years, their departure has, of course, had a significant effect on the school. We'd like to thank Father James for all he and his brothers for all they have done for our school, whether that be guiding countless students through their sacraments, praying with us in our houses, supporting our faith, or simply being a positive presence around the school. The whole school owes a huge debt of gratitude to the entire community of St. Gregory, for forging us into the school that we are today. Although the monks may have left, our Catholic faith still remains essential in our lives. After all, it is Catholicism which makes Downside Downside, and our Benedictine values seep into all aspects of the Downside community. The Chileans have played an important pastoral uh, role in the uh, school for many years now, and now with the departure of the monks, this role has become only more important. Many Downside pupils take part in lexia groups at least once a week, and we are sure this is a number that will only grow in years to come. Four of these communities, St. John's, St. Luke's, St. Teresa's, and St. Francis's communities, 
take important leadership roles within the school, fundraising for charity with events like the St. Teresa's Sleepout in aid of uh, help for homeless, and in the environmental efforts across the whole school of the newly restarted St. Francis community. We'd also like to once again congratulate Father Michael on his appointment as school chaplain and wish him the best of luck as he takes on this role full-time in the next academic year. It is with great sadness that myself and Jay's was time series coming to an end, although we know this ending only heralds new opportunities for ourselves and the rest of the upper sixth. Our experiences as a head boy and head girl have been invaluable, and we are very grateful for Mr Hobbs for, making, for giving us this opportunity, and we hope he doesn't regret his decision too much. Throughout our time, we've been able to organise many events, such as our sixth form conference on modern threats to human rights, um, as well as taking a leading role as co-chairs of the Abingdon S Debating Society, both of which were greatly helped by the keen involvement of both staff and student alike. As much as we would like to say that we ran the show as a two-man act, we, would, we must acknowledge the help of the senior prefects, who have helped to ease our burden of work. Um, while the stick may have often been more effective than the carrot, we still very much appreciate the great help of the heads of houses, who have run both their own houses effectively and assisted Jason and I. Houses really shape a student's experience at Downside, and I think we can safely say that the house staff has been nothing short of brilliant in our entire time here, and they've really made us into the young people that we are today. Therefore, we would like to thank all the house staff as well as our tutors and academic teachers who have often gone far beyond what they need to do in helping us. Finally, although we would like to think of ourselves as hard act to follow, we are both confident that Freddie and Anna will do an exceptional job next year, and we wish them the best of luck as they take their posts. Although there have been many highlights of our time as heads of school, undoubtedly the waste case being first among them, we are incredibly sad to see our time here come to an end. However, we are looking forward to the future and all the opportunities it will bring for us, most especially during the ever-growing ever number of older Gregorians at Exeter University. Thank you. Recently, I was fascinated to hear Johnny Wilkinson interviewed. He was reflecting how glad he was to have won the World Cup at such a young age, but not because it had led to feelings of fulfillment and joy at having achieved his dream, but instead almost the exact opposite. He was grateful to have been res rescued from wasting years of his life chasing an uh, achievement which he thought would provide the answer only to find that he had misunderstood the question in the first place. In his words, he had been concentrating on becoming extremely fit so that he could achieve, rather than being healthy so that he could live. He has come to realize that health is the foundation of fitness, rather than fitness providing a route to health. He speaks now more like a philosopher than an athlete, recognizing our need to acknowledge both our spiritual and physical nature if we are to live lives which fulfill us. Simply put, read the question before you put in hours of or even years of effort answering the wrong one, resulting in frustration and disappointment. Or remember that our achievements are stations along the journey, not our destination. As you may have read in today's program and have heard from our Chair of Governors, we've spent time over the last year working to articulate successfully Downside's vision. The aim of a vision statement is to encapsulate our distinctive character and provide a blueprint for what we aspire to look like when we reach maturity. We'll never quite get there, of course. As I've now found out, getting old and reaching maturity are not the same thing. I've never won the World Cup, but I've certainly reached a few stations I mistook for, for destinations. So our vision that we've settled upon is, Downside's vision as a Catholic and Benedictine school with Christ at its center is to be a bright light in education and to inspire service in our world. Well, if Christ is at the center, it stands to reason that I cannot be at the center, and nor can you. And the huge benefit of this is that you and I don't have to fight to take the central role. 
In a community with Christ at its centre, there are enough roles to go round. In fact, there is one tailor-made for each one of us, which is handily designed with room to grow into. And we're politely asked not to apply for the position of Managing Director of the Universe, because that position is taken already. And by the way, the incumbent is not a sinister Big Brother type presence who is compiling a CCTV recording of our lives to use in evidence against us, but a generous, loving and supportive one who wants to see us flourish. You see, we are a school which allows for and encourages the recognition of the existence of God and the exploration of faith. For me, one of this year's greatest joys has been the return of musical performance. After the drought enforced by the restrictions necessary to halt the pandemic, it has been wonderful to see music flooding back to enliven us again. As our choirs, bands and orchestra have once again blossomed and enriched our lives this year, I've been struck by what a wonderful metaphor they provide for living in a thriving community with Christ at its center. We seek to foster and build a, build a united community whose members come together like an orchestra or a choir, with each member playing their instrument or adding their voice. Each contributes their line of the score in tune with and listening to those around them. It may at times be akin to jazz or a cappella where we can or even have to improvise, but always trusting each other collaborating and supporting. This is the community we must be if we want to realize our vision, and it can only be achieved if we work together in unity, a unity which is vital and dynamic. Unity is diversity embraced, celebrate, embraced, celebrated, and held together by generosity, honesty, and love. It encourages imagination, challenge and risk within an environment of trust. It must not be confused with uniformity, which might sometimes look the same from the outside, but which is actually the opposite, as it is rigid and lifeless, often imposed through coercion or fear of being different. Uniformity is also simpler. As we've been able to return to familiar methods of academic study this year, the simple approach would be to adopt a let's go back to normal attitude, missing the opportunity for growth and innovation, which disruption always provides us. But our priority is to inspire academic curiosity in our pupils and to accompany them on their journey of exploration, encouraging independent thought and preparing them to meet challenges, including but not limited to those posed by the examiners. We want them to be able to play in harmony rather than sticking to rigid unison. The academic life of the school is in good hands. Our academic leadership team, led by our deputy head, Mike Randall, has been an exciting development, bringing new ideas and providing fresh impetus. I'm very grateful to Mike and his team, Richard Rawlins, head of sixth form, Oliver Simper, head of the fourth and fifth form, Belen Iglesias, head of first to third form, and Paul Rigby, head of learning and innovation. The new arrangements ensure that our pupils are extremely well supported in ways appropriate to their needs at each stage, and our teachers are continually collaborating and sharing good practice. I want to take this opportunity to thank all the teaching staff for their exceptional support and commitment. Whilst this year has been much more recognizable as school as we know it, the reality is that our, that our teachers have had to continue to adapt and innovate and have done so with enormous generosity. We all know the exquisite taste of water when we are overheated through exercise and have been denied liquid for hours, or how delicious a tin of baked beans can be when you reach your campsite at the end of a long day's walking. The return this year of our previously staple extracurricular program has tasted similarly sensational. School sport is a privilege to play and to watch, this year more than ever. The leadership groups of our first teams this year considered carefully what they wanted their legacy to be. 
Would the memory of their team be confined to a tally of wins, draws and losses recorded in the Raven? Or would they put their efforts into leaving a lasting and positive mark on the culture of the school? I can categorically attest to their having adopted the latter approach. Our sportsmen and women are achieving high standards individually and collectively, but most importantly, their legacy is to have passed on an understanding that health comes before fitness. We have all been given new lenses through which to enjoy our sport, whether as pupils, coaches or spectators, and we must not go back to our old prescription. And that prescription works for every aspect of our lives here, whether it's taking on the 10 Tours Challenge or speaking at a debate on the parade ground with the CCF or on the stage taking part in a production. We must see staging post rather than destination. We must think health before fitness. I've already extended my thanks to the teaching staff, but they are just one section of the orchestra which makes up our community. I want to thank every single one of our staff, whichever section they belong to, whether it be catering, support, pastoral, academic, or spiritual. The music we make and the harmony we achieve is reliant on the commitment and professionalism of each one of you, and I thank you. It is also often reliant on those unseen people who support you at home. Downside is not just a job for many of us, but an investment of our lives. I know how grateful I am to my family, and particularly my wife Damaris, for her support. My gratitude goes very much to those who support you all. At the end of each year, we are sad to lose members of our community, but recognise that they are taking their music with them and will enrich the communities of which they are becoming a part. Our graduate assistants are pivotal members of the teaching and pastoral sections. Once again, they have been quick to pick up the rhythm and help us to maintain the high tempo of life here at Downside. I extend my sincere thanks to Jack Knight and Olivia Johnson as they move on after their year with us for their generous commitment and willingness to adapt to what has been needed. Jess Doherty has been our artist in residence, but so much more. Her endless drive and passion for life makes her fun to be around, and she will undoubtedly continue to be responsible for regular outbreaks of smiling wherever she goes. I thank her particularly for reinvigorating the St. Francis community and championing sustainability in the school, leaving an important legacy for us to build on. Tony Bevan has been a devoted member of our string section for 36 years. He has taught the violin and viola at Downside throughout that time with genuine devotion and taking, teaching the piano as the need has arisen also. He has served Downside with immense loyalty and I thank him. Johnny Bridges, another member of our music department, left, left at Christmas. His time with us was far briefer, but his energy was endless and his contribution significant. And another person I must thank who is not here is Caroline Brawley, who was our Director of HR and subsequently Director of Operations, whose wisdom and guidance were critical in the school's successful institution as a distinct and separate trust. Robbie Holder, who left us recently after 20, over 20 years of service, was both a cleaner and a porter during that time. He was always willing to help and always with a smile. Up at the crack of dawn, one of his roles was to open the school gates every day, a genuine example of devoted service. And judging by the fact that the gates were opened every morning, a real example of dependability. Hannah Grant, one of our receptionists for eight years, has moved on recently too. We thank her for her service and for the warm welcome she always gave us and any visitor who arrived at the old house. Gabor Tahin has been a servant to Downside for 10 years, primarily inspiring our classicists, but his interests, as, as any good classicist should be, are enormously varied, and he has contributed in diverse ways to our community. We will miss his wise words at hymn practice, where his, he has become a reg regular contributor and done so delivering always with great humor and always containing a highly thought-provoking message. It's hard to believe that Jenny Price, 
has only been at the downside for five years. In that time, she has become a stalwart in the theology faculty and been a great support to all the girls and staff in Cabral House, where she has been the assistant housemistress. And her double act with Anna McGarry, the housemistress, has not been confined to Cabral, as together they have coached what seems to be an ever-growing number of increasingly enthusiastic swimmers. This, no doubt, is because, as with everything she does, she's demanding but always makes it fun. It's no surprise that she has been appointed to the role of housemistress at Wycliffe College. We are sorry to see Jenny go, but she is ready for this new challenge and, it, and, an excite, and it's an exciting one too. As Jenny moves to her new responsibility, Jonathan Dolman is passing his on after eight years as housemaster in Powell. He has done a wonderful job in, his vital, in this vital role, creating such a warm and welcoming environment for our youngest boys and giving them an excellent springboard from which to launch into life in their senior houses. I'm delighted that he will be continuing as a teacher at Downside and as an important contributor to the school's co-curricular program. We look forward to welcome, welcoming his successor, Andy Hamilton, who joins us in September. Philly Witt and Risha Burke have been contributors to one of the most crucial sections of our orchestra, supporting pupils who need help with distinct learning needs. Philly's gentleness and patience, alongside the high expectations she sets for her pupils, has invariably led to their rising to the challenge. Risha's journey to Downside's learning support department has been more circuitous, but whatever role she has played here over the last 34 years, she has carried out with selfless generosity and limitless enthusiasm. Thank you, Risha. The school will feel odd without you, but enjoy your retirement and know that you are always welcome here. I'd like to give all of those a round of applause if possible. As you all know, this year marked the departure of the monastic community from Downside, and we said farewell to Father James. Johnny Grew, president of the St. Gregory Society, will speak a little about him when he introduces him uh, as this year's, one of this year's recipients of the Old Gregorian Medal. But I want to register here my heartfelt thanks for the support he has provided to our school community over his years at the school. People sometimes ask me what proportion of the school is Catholic. I understand their reasoning, but I think that a statistic like that can be misleading. I prefer to look at it a little differently. Perhaps the following reflection I read by Richard Rohr on what makes a Christian is helpful. A Christian is someone who's met a saint because the whole thing is contagious. When we meet a person of of a certain quality of maturity, we too can become more mature. We meet a patient person and we learn how to be patient. We meet a loving person and we learn how to be loving. That's the way human beings operate. When we meet a really grounded, happy and free person, we become more like that because we'll be satisfied with nothing less. The whole thing, our faith, spreads spreads through and by the quality of our relationships. Father James is certainly a contagious Christian. I'm not attempting a sneaky canonization, but he has certainly met a saint. And for me, he has very definitely been that centered person, that person grounded and in union with God, who has helped to bring my faith to life. And I know that I'm not alone in, that, in my experience. All our lives have been enriched by his presence in and support of our community. He certainly no, makes no claim to perfection, nor does he expect it in others, but he is attuned to Christ and he recognizes Christ in others. And we must not fear that his departure will lead to any decline in the spiritual or liturgical life of the school. 
Father Michael Patey has taken on the role of priest chaplain with huge commitment and energy. And our chaplaincy team, supported by the St. Scholastica community from the Mankewe Apostolic Movement in Chile, remains highly contagious. I'd just like to give Father James a round of applause. Today's prize giving has been arranged in a slightly different manner to recognize each one of our departing upper sixth and to thank and congratulate you in, you in a small way for what you have contributed to our community, whether you have won a prize or not. But I want to thank you as a group now for the tone you have set and for the manner in which you have conducted yourselves. You can be extremely proud of your legacy. As we've rebuilt this year after so much disruption, you have made sure our foundations are firm and have set high standards for your successors to follow. You've shared many formative experiences from which you have certainly learnt a great deal, and it has been good to see the bonds of respect and friendship develop over, t over your time here. We're extremely sad to see you go, but wish you the very best of luck as you do. We will miss you, but can enjoy the fruits of your influence, which will certainly remain. We very much hope you will stay in touch in the coming years. We've been blessed once again this year with wonderful heads of school. Stephanie and Joseph are remarkable young people, intelligent, sensitive to the needs of others, and highly articulate. As you've just heard, they speak with confidence and authority, and the conviction of their words translates into action. They have led the community with generosity, humility, and courage, setting the highest standards for themselves and inspiring others to achieve their best. I've looked forward to our weekly meetings and valued their honest and constructive input, which has played a crucial part in addressing issues and developing new initiatives in the school. They leave the school a richer place for their contribution. They have bright futures, and I look forward to watching their progress beyond downside. I have some gifts for them today as tokens of thanks, and I'd like to give them to them now. And I'm delighted to announce and congratulate next year's heads of school, Anna Hayhurst and Freddie Whitaker. As we look forward to next year and the years beyond, we must remain fixed on our vision to help us navigate our way. We need to make sure we have typed the correct information into the sat-nav if we are to avoid disappointment, like Earl Spencer's daughter, who set out once to watch Chelsea play Arsenal at Stanford Bridge and ended up at a village in Yorkshire of the same name. Ironically, even though she knew that her taxi was heading in the opposite direction from London, traveling north rather than south, she allowed the driver to carry on regardless. In today's society, there are plenty of equivalent taxis ready to take us to bogus destinations if we let them. As I said at the outset, if we type Christ at the center into our satnav, then we can enjoy playing our part in the orchestra delighting in the talents of our fellow players and captivated by the rich sound we are making together. We may at times find ourselves off course and be tempted to want to take on the conductor's role. But in this orchestra, that role is already filled very capably. When we do occasionally snatch the baton and barge the conductor out the way, we find the music loses its form and becomes dissonant. That's when we need to check the postcode against the name so that we can find our way back to our instrument. We are building our orchestra here and will continue to do so. And this is a moment for me to say thank you to our exceptional and highly committed governing body who form such a crucial section of it. I want to thank or add my thanks to, to Michael's, to Dr. Giles Mercer, who is here today for his support during his time as Chair of Governors. 
He's a man of extraordinary integrity and wisdom, and I thank him for the time and commitment he has given Downside. He became chair of governors at a vital moment, taking over from Adrian Aylward, who gave so much to Downside and died so sadly in 2020. Adrian's life will be remembered tomorrow at a memorial service in London, and we will next term have an official opening of the Aylward Room in the school. I'm enormously grateful to Michael Bernard, who has taken on the role of chair, and to all the governors for their support of Downside. They continue to be a source of vital encouragement and stability, ensuring we have the right information in our sat-nav so that we can look to the future with confidence that we are heading in the right direction. I would also like to thank all those from amongst the old Gregorians and the wider Downside community who have been so generous in their support, so generous, in fact, that I had the pleasure of taking a dip in an ice bath to mark our reaching 150 donors during our highly successful Giving Day earlier this week. In the end, I think the figure was, uh, was well over 200 people who gave, showing enor enormous generosity and commitment to our community. My sincere thanks to everyone who took part in making the day such a success. Finally, I'd like to say how especially grateful we are to you, the parents, for the trust you have shown in us and for working with us. Our relationship is one of partnership rather than transaction. You are very much in the orchestra with us and a vital section. There may, well, there may well be World Cup winners with us here today. There are certainly young people who will go on to do extraordinary things. And when they do, I am confident they will be able to enjoy them in harmony with the composition they are playing, alongside and dependent on their fellow musicians. We must remember that whether we are playing the melody providing the harmony, or even counting bars of rest, we are all essential and valued members of God's orchestra. Thank you very much. Now, as I said, we're trying a slightly new format today, uh, and um, I'm going to be asking every member of the Upper Sixth who is here to come up, uh, and I'm going, to, I'm going to read out the names in, in sixes. I'm going to say a little snippet about each one. It is a, t a tiny snippet, I, and, and uh, I'm sorry that we can't put more in, but we would be here um, for days. And, um, and, uh, and there are... Obviously, those who've won prizes will receive prizes. There are some prizes which we've held back uh, for the moment. So, the first uh, group. Abdul Kalik Akwenza Al-Karim, Sam Bellord, Lorenzo Bergamasco, Ben Boaside, Sophia Burton, Inigo Canayas. Kalik has been an outstanding leader as the head of Smythe and as a sportsman. He's been supportive and mature in his approach to school, giving confidence to those around him. Sam is a caring, energetic person with an infectious personality. He's contributed very positively in the first teams for rugby, hockey, and cricket. Lorenzo can do what only a few of us can, speak three languages fluently, French, Italian, and English, and is a dab hand at flying a drone. Ben is a talented musician, completing a course at the British and Irish Modern Music Institute in Bristol which specializes in training professional musicians. Sophia is a passionate, enthusiastic leader and has taken her caring and service-oriented ethos into the wider school. We thank her for leading the chaplaincy and her integrity in speaking on important issues. And Inigo is a talented sportsman, particularly gifted in hockey and basketball, and has contributed widely and positive to the life of the school. Could they come up, please? Thank you. 
Mariana Selyarek, Adam Chan, Jimmy Chow, Angus Christie, Harry Clark, and Alice Colgan. Mariana is dedicated to her science, and it has, and has been a delight to see her musical talents blossom. We thank her for her work with St. Teresa's and many other charitable activities. Adam's cheerful demeanor has been a joy to see around Robert's house. He's also been a positive contributor on the basketball court. Jimmy is a wonderfully positive character and richly deserves his Smythe House cap. He wears his talents with modesty and is always engaging and generous. He also wins the Squire Mathematics Prize. Angus is an exemplary young man who applies himself so admirably and wholeheartedly to all of his broad range of endeavours. He's a selfless leader. He also wins the RSM W01 Roger Nicholas Prize. Harry, uh, whether it be on the cricket pitch or in his role as a house prefect or from the care he shows for those around him, he's earned the respect of the whole community. He wins the Economics Subject Prize, the Hugh Watts Cup for the most improved rugby player and gets his cap for cricket. Alice has become a much valued member of Isabel House and in her role as a prefect, she has been an incredible support to the house team whilst being highly respected by the younger girls. I should have said that Mariana wins the chemistry subject prize also. Could they come up? Come on to Albie Cutball, Rafe Door Lane, Joseph Day, Will Dewhurst, Zach Dinning, and Maria Dolman. Albie is a promising and dedicated Great British sailor, which takes commitment and dedication. It's, it's a great credit to him that he has balanced this alongside school and has contributed willingly and generously to the community. Rafe's affable, na affable nature has made him a popular and highly valued member of Robert's house. He demonstrates enormous determination in all that he takes on. Joe has conducted himself commendably this year, not only as head of school, but in every aspect of school life. He wins the Classics and German Subject Prizes, the Burn Brass Trophy and the Tambling Cup. Will's dedication and passion for Robert's house is fantastic, and he will certainly be greatly missed, as will his immense contribution to the music of the school. So Zach has given enormously to Downside and to Barlow House, particularly as a prefect and as a sportsman. He wins the Physical Education Prize. And Maria has contributed enormously at Downside over her seven years here, be it music, sport, open days, CCF, Lexio Leader. She's been an excellent prefect. She wins the History of Art and the British Legion Prize and wins a cap for tennis. Well done to them. Oh, 
we'll, we'll sort that out afterwards. Then. Right, right, well, thank you. Okay. The next group comprises Amir Evans, Archie Farthing, Lily Garrett, Jacob Gould, Louis Hanson, and Ben Hart. Mia is a much valued member of Isabel House. She is a great artist. Her determination is a great strength, and even when she finds something challenging, she never gives up. Archie has a passion for all things sport and was a pivotal member of the first 15. He's been dedicated, humble, and enthusiastic, having a, a positive influence on those around him. Lily has done a fantastic job as head of girls, ju uh, junior girls. She's talented, generous, and energetic, a natural leader who has a, had a wonderfully positive impact. She wins the CCF Prize and the Baron Drama Prize. Jacob has done a fantastic job as head of Roberts. He's led by example, and it is evident that the younger boys in the house look up to him with respect and admiration. He is an outstanding sportsman, and it is a pleasure to award him the Gordon Hemmings uh, Cricket Award, which he won in the game against OGs, uh, and more importantly, he is the Cave Cup for Sportsman of the Year. The Louis is dependable, well-liked by everyone. He leads by example as captain of the first 11, showing commitment and determination, and he wins his cap for cricket. And Ben has been an excellent prefect and sports captain in Robert's house. He's someone you'd want in the trenches with you. He is a worthy winner of the Piers Trevelyan Cup for his outstanding contribution to Robert's house. next group is Ben Harwood, Gus Healy, Sally Healy, Shatara Ida, Stephanie Jedi Agba, and Madeline Jones. Ben is friendly, helpful, and loyal. He's been a stalwart in Barlow and is a keen and skilled sportsman. It is to his credit that he bore uh, the frustrations of recurrent injury with exemplary patience and good grace. Gus is level-headed and considered in his decisions. When he sets his mind to something, he always does his best to achieve it. He has been consistently motivated and hard working. Uh, Sally is an extremely talented girl. She's contributed to an exceptional standard in music, drama and sport. She's also played a central role in St. Teresa community. Sally wins the French History at, uh, Prizes and the Timothy Fogg Poetry Prize. Shotaro has a mischievous sense of humour and a ready smile um, is ever present. He's done an excellent job as deputy head in Barlow He's contributed much besides, especially as a sportsman and in setting ac the academic tone. Stephanie is a deeply impressive and mature head, head of school with a sense of great purpose, calmness and flair. She's contributed in every area of school life to the highest standard. I'm reliably told if you want a large group of people to sit up and listen, she's your girl. Uh, Maddie uh, has a gentle yet determined leadership style which has drawn the admiration of all uh, of all and enables her to bring out the best in others and get them to go above and beyond. She wins the Spanish prize and gets her cap for tennis. And Ben Harwood receives the regimental sergeant major cup and his cap for tennis also. Could they come up?
I just ask that you, you come up in the order in which you're called out because it's, it's, it's a tough job over here, I think. Um, our next group, Robert Keeley, Lydia Kelsch, Dominic Quan, Daniel Kwok, Jason Lai, and Andy Lamb. Rob is immensely hardworking and organized. His leadership of the first 15 was exceptional. He created an excellent culture in the team and had the respect of every member of the squad and his coaches. He also wins the biology prize. Lydia, as a prefect, has been a tremendous support to the younger girls. She's a diligent student who has conviction for service and has contributed much in the St. Teresa community. She wins the art prize. Dominic is an impressive young man. He's unfailingly helpful in the house and in the music department. He has the most beautiful voice, as we heard earlier, and we thank him for all he has given to Downside and especially the music department. Daniel is a quiet and diligent young man who has applied himself with purpose. He is appreciated by peers and staff and a value, valued member of the basketball team. We thank Jason for his good humour and everything he's contributed to the Downside community, especially in Barlow House. And Andy has been reliable and effective as a prefect and especially as deputy head of Power House. I know that Mr. Dolman and the Power staff greatly value the time and commitment he has given in Power and to the boys there, if they could come up in that order. Next group is Louis Leblanc, London Leung, Roman Magendi, Roman Magendi, Brian Macaza, Conchi Manzo Duffy, and Montague Mackey. Louis has also made a man, uh, valuable contribution as Robert's, uh, to Robert's house and as leader of the sacristy team. His relaxed, friendly manner makes him enjoyable company, and he's been a great captain of the football team. London is reliable, punctual, and thoughtful. He's a diligent student and has put particular effort into his design project. He's also a highly accomplished table tennis player. Roman has a great sense of humour and has made a valuable contribution as a Roberts prefect. He is a confident performer and a positive influence on others. Brian is spirited, determined and single-minded. He has made great strides during his time at Downside. He enjoyed playing for the first 15 this year. Conchi is kind and generous. She's been committed to the St. Teresa community, whether helping in the soup kitchen in Bristol or sleeping out to raise awareness of homely, homelessness. She's been keen, always keen to make a difference. She wins her cap for tennis. And Monty has shown determination, resilience and persistence throughout his time here and has present, represented the school admirably in cross-country running and clay pigeon shooting. And I should have said that London wins the design prize. Could they come up? The next group is Jakob Milsarek, Beth Mitten, Chloe Gan, Oliver Penny, 
Eleanor Perkins, and Magda Pienkowska. Jakob is a, an exceptional young man who stands out as one of the most driven, able, and intellectually curious students, exhibiting a sincere passion for his studies. He's been a reliable and committed house prefect. He wins the physics and math subject prizes. Beth, as head of house, uh, has been an inspiration to the girls in the house and has been a constant support to the house team. She also, as you heard earlier, has a beautiful voice. She wins the English Literature and Music Subject Awards and also the Marcus Atkinson Award and the Thai Medal for Artistic Endeavour. Chloe is a musician, K-pop dancer and quiet diplomat. She's also a tremendously hard worker. She's shown herself to be kind and caring as a prefect in Cavan. Oliver has made huge progress during his time in sixth form. His calm, measured attitude has been commendable and he's flourished playing for the first year in hockey. Eleanor has contributed much by supporting younger pupils and her peers. She possesses enormous empathy and emotional intelligence and is a valued member of Cavan. And Magda has been a wonderful prefect. She's thoughtful and empathetic and supports younger pupils uh, with a calm, easygoing and genuine interest. She has the, the gratitude of her house staff for her mature direction and performance. Uh, sorry, uh, she has our gratitude for her mature direction of uh, performance of the theatrical events. If they could come up, please. Next is Teddy Preston, Barney Sharifi, Jamie Shee, Lara Standervan, Sebastian Strathwitz Hamilton, and Max Surrey. Teddy has made a very valuable contribution in Barlow as prefect. He's thoughtful and has a great conviction. He's also a crucial member of the Clay Pigeon shooting team. Barney has a brilliant analytical mind and has always been willing to take responsibility. He's helped to promote an atmosphere of respect and support for one another in Roberts. He wins the Religious Studies Prize and the debating prize. Jamie has the most impressive memory and admirable work ethic. He also a, is highly respectful and courteous. He's been a generous contributor in Roberts and to the school community. Lara's kind and caring nature is much appreciated by girls and staff alike. She has an impressive musical talent, both singing and playing the cello, and has given generously to the music at Downside. Basti has been a reliable and authoritative head of Barlow. He has had a significant role in the Sacristy team as well as Barlow and has been a dependable reader. Max has made great progress in rugby this year, uh, playing for the First 15 and for the Bath Academy under 18. His dry sense of humour will be missed in Robert's house. Could they come up, please? Last group is Ak Orke Weiberg, Henry Wong, Alfred Wong, Ollie Wood, and Sophie Worrell. Orke is an ex extremely talented sportsman, playing for the first, first 11 um, football and rugby and rugby sevens. Academically, he is driven, enthusiastic, and determined. Henry's naturally sunny disposition has very rarely waned. He is incredibly conscientious, well-mannered, 
and motivated to do well. Alfred is erudite and enjoys discussing a wide range of uh, ideas. He has a great sense of humour and is independent in his approach. Ollie is an independent and increasingly confident young man. His reliable, trustworthy nature has made him an excellent prefect in Roberts. His services to drumming will definitely be missed, as will his late goals for the first 11 football team. He wins the geography prize. And Sophie has been an ent entirely reliable and trustworthy deputy head of house. She's a wonderful example to others as she makes the most of her multiple gifts. She is a genuine all-rounder but achieves excellence in whatever she does. And she wins a cap for tennis. Um, and uh, Henry Wong wins business studies and psychology prizes. Could they come up, please? We now come on to uh, the prizes, uh, a, few, a few prizes which haven't been given already. And uh, the Augustine Baker Prize, which is given for spiritual uh, writing, um, goes to Ella Chow. Is Ella here? We will give Ella a clap. Ah. Contested one, the Interhouse Chess Cup uh, was run won by Roberts House. Could somebody from Roberts House come up and receive that? The next one which hasn't been awarded is the Turnbull Cup for Outstanding Sports Achievement. This goes to Abdul Khalik Akwenza Al Karim. Khalik has been an outstanding example, always working hard to make the most of his considerable talent. He suffered a number of setbacks through injury, but has shown extraordinary resilience to remain upbeat and confident. He undoubtedly knows what, uh, the, that health is the root of fitness and he has been deservedly rewarded with a Bath Rugby contract, and I look forward to watching him develop in the coming years. So well done to him. The James Turnbull Cup for Sports Women of the Year goes to Maria Dolman. Maria has been an excellent role model in everything she does and is not just an exceptional sportswoman, but an outstanding character. She has played first team sport from such a young age in just about every sport and, give conf and, and gives confidence to those with whom she plays, whatever the sport. So could you come up please, Maria?
And now for the Boves uh, prizes, uh, pr Prize for Outstanding Academic Achievement. Um, this goes to somebody um, who I taught in the second form. It's a long time since then. Um, but it was clear then that he had an incredibly sharp mind and rare curiosity. He's continued in that vein throughout his time at Downside, developing into an exceptional academic scholar. He's already been a worthy winner of the Squire Maths Prize, but I'm delighted to award Jimmy, the, Jimmy Chow the Boves Prize for Outstanding Academic Achievement. We now have um, a, a, a slightly odd interlude, if you like, because it's not for one of our pupils, but one of our past pupils that we're going to have a, an award. Um, the first class honours. We, well, we, um, we give £100 to anybody who leaves here and then gets a first in their degree. Um, I hope it hasn't cost more than £100 to get here. But, um, <laughs> um, but it is really wonderful to welcome back those who achieve excellence beyond downside. You may or may not have won an award now. What I hope um, that downside gives you is that sense that you can achieve at any stage uh, along the journey. Um, and um, we've had plenty of OG, win uh, OG medal winners who never won an, a prize whilst they were in the school. Um, so it is wonderful to be able to welcome people back who are achieving beyond. And um, I, I'm delighted that today, we're, we, well, I'm delight, I, uh, there is only one, so she has the limelight. Um, I'm delighted that it's somebody um, who was here in my time, and it is Bella Taylor, um, who has got a first-class degree for philosophy from Newcastle University, and she's currently gone on, uh, she's currently at uh, Edinburgh University completing her MSc, so we wish her luck. I'm not sure I'll give you a, a second hundred pounds if you, uh, if you get a first in that, but anyway. Um, please come up, Bella. Uh, The R.R. R. Stokes Memorial um, uh, Prize um, is described in the back of, of the, uh, the program um, is to encourage the recipient to follow example of Richard Stokes who maintained the highest standards of ability, integrity and leadership both at school and throughout his career. He was also noted for his commitment to the practice of the Catholic faith. Um, this, this prize, um, uh, well, before I award it, I'd like to thank... Um, Peter Jenkins, one of our former governors, and Mary Henderson, the former head of Western Burt School, for once again conducting the interviews for this award. There was a strong field of candidates, but the, the ultimate um, winner was uh, Robert Keeley, who impressed the panel with his obvious passion and drive. His academic talents lie very much in science, where um, those were the, the area for um, uh, Stokes himself, Richard Stokes, um, and uh, he, he's an outstanding performer in science and his conviction to make a positive impact came across very clearly in the interview. So Robert Keeley, uh, could you come up and receive that? So the next one is uh, uh, one that is given to a house, um, hotly contested, and it's for the house which has received the most merits commendations. Um, and um, th this year, 
it has it had to be calculated a few ways because we can't just give it to the biggest house. It has to be done on points per per member of the house. So um, it has been calculated correctly, and it is won this year by Cabral House. Mackenzie Cup is given to the junior, outstanding junior pupil, um, and in the for, uh, who comes from the first and second form. This person is completely committed to everything that she does, be it music, drama, or sport, and can be relied upon to look after others and shows incredible empathy for her peers. Uh, she's someone who's always there, supporting and thinking about other people. An excellent ambassador. Presented the, represented the school in sports, uh, attended trials for the JDC at Avon, uh, talented performer, committed member of the choir, uh, performed in several school plays. This goes to Ottilie Reese davis A new one that we've, we've had um, presented to us is the Dowie Prize, which has been donated by the Dowie Foundation, which has been established to support and encourage Benedictine life and education. Uh, it's for pupils who demonstrate commitment to, benefit, to, to Benedictine values. Um, it's a pretty hard thing to do in a school where everybody is um, doing such an incredible job of um, demonstrating that. Um, we've, I've decided this year on two recipients, um, both girls actually, one of whom, um, by, by nice symmetry is the daughter of somebody who went to Dowie uh, and that is Sophie Worrell and the other one who is our head girl Stephanie Jenny Agna so I think this is the moment where I invite uh, our uh, president of the OGs to uh, St. Gregory Society to come up, please. Um, Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure to be awarding the OG uh, medal on behalf of the, the OGs. Um, the, this year we have two recipients, one of which you've heard about, and I'll talk about him uh, in a minute. But our other recipient are two very contrasting people, one at the senior end of their career and one at the junior end of their career. Um, so I'm very pleased to announce to you that uh, William White, who was in Bale in 2014 or left in 2014, um, is, going to, is the other recipient this year. Unfortunately, I don't think he's here yet. He's hoping to get here later. But he's a very outstanding man. He's always been uh, doing above and beyond. He certainly wasn't sitting still during the holidays. And I'll just share with you some of the things that he did um, when he was in sort of year 10. Uh, he walked around the Isle of Wight in, the aid, of, uh, in aid of water aid. Uh, and, and the following summer, he was went to did the Camino de Santiago de Compostela um, and took about three weeks doing that. He, the year after, oh, and then in between, he did the Three Peaks Challenge, of course. 
the year after that, he did the Iceland trek. Uh, and then he rode his bike from Canterbury to Jerusalem. It doesn't say how long that took, uh, but I'm sure it took quite a bit of time. He's also done a trek in Mongolia. And he's done lots of endurance challenges and marathons. Um, and in 2016, Will and two other OGs took part in the Exmoor 2020 race, running 30 miles, carrying 30 pounds in weight, and doing it all for charity. He also was a great fundraiser for Mary's Meals, on a more, and on more than one occasion included cycling the way of Genghis Khan, which I have no idea what it is, and I didn't get a chance to look it up. <laughs> so if anybody knows what that is. But more recently, and this is really where I was most impressed by him, he uh, did not achieve an army scholarship, but he pursued his uh, wish to join the paras, and he is a member of two para um, as a, um, a, a, a squad, a non-commissioned officer. Um, and I was really impressed um, when I met him when we were doing the laying the wreaths for the memorial this year, and he was telling me he had just come back from Kabul. And he was part of the team that took people out of the part of the British Army team. And some of the stories that he tell, tell me were absolutely amazing. And there were certain skills that he clearly didn't learn here, but his colleagues from the north uh, obviously did know, like um, hot wiring vehicles and stuff like that, which <laughs> um, I gather when they arrived, they were rather short of vehicles, so they had to make do with what they could find around the place at the time. Um, so I was particularly well taught, uh, impressed by everything he had to tell me about that. And um, because he said he wasn't able to come, he sent me a quick note. And it's, what he said was, it means a lot to be awarded the AG medal after such a historical and tumultuous event, Carble. I'd like to accept the award on behalf of the parachute regiment, and especially the parareg Toms, who were the privates. And if those of you who know about the parachute regiment, they were a tomato uh, berry. Um, it's a bit, a bit darker than that. Um, and many who were the same age, 18, as myself when I left Downside, and the upper six formers leaving Downside this year. They did an incredible job in really challenging circumstances. So I think in his absence, I think we ought to give him a quick round for being in the <laughs> I'll just remind you what the old Gregorian Medal is about. It says, it's presented to an AG who has made an exemplary contribution to society, chosen by St. Gregory's Society to inspire our pupils. Uh, Dom James has been that person in so many different ways. Uh, obviously, he's done, given his life to uh, monastic, the monastic life, and he has been very supportive of all the downside foundations. He has um, been involved with Bermondsey for a long, long time. He currently um, does the AMV pilgrimages and is a very well sought after chaplain. He's given a huge amount to the school in all sorts of ways, which the headmaster explained earlier on. Um, and I know he's going to say a few words for me in a minute. Um, and he's a man of um, quietness and distinguished that we always see on the altar, I think, um, those of us who've been here in high mass and much missed but we thank him very much for that and all the things that he's done. So I ask Father James to come and receive his medal. I must confess, I, I'm not used to coming up here for prizes at all. Uh, and I was just reflecting earlier on, actually, it's actually 50 years since I left school, uh, 1972, July. Um, I must, and I'm also rather taken aback of having been awarded this as when this prize was introduced, uh, one of my brethren said, well, 
you won't be getting that. You're disenfranchised. We don't get those prizes. So when I heard, uh, I had a very short letter. You don't get letters these days. Uh, it's all done in other forms of communication. So when I received a letter a few weeks ago, it really quite took me aback. Uh, anyway, I'd like to really start off by saying congratulations. And congratulations, first of all, to all the many prize winners, but also a very special congratulations to all those of you who haven't won prizes. Uh, because, and the reason for this is that you too have played a really important part in this prize day. Because without you, your support and friendship, today's many prize winners would, have, would not have got where they are. During the academic year, there were no doubt moments when your hand of friendship, your encouragement did much to lift and help one or more of today's prize winners. There will also have been many occasions of you in the classroom and the games field, in the choir that contributed that little bit of competitiveness that helped raise the standard. Well done. But I don't want you prize winners to think that you don't deserve your prizes. Yes, you do. Congratulations. But at the same time, being someone who has won very few prizes, I want to encourage those of you who haven't won prizes today. Yes, I've attended, uh, I probably the person here who's probably attended the most prize days here, and I've never been up on the stage to get a prize, or indeed actually to speak to everybody. So I have a message for you. Uh, Mr. Hobbs asked me if I prepared my speech last night. Um, and so my message to you all, and that's pupils, parents, staffs, and friends, a very short word, pray. Yes, that needs a little bit of unpacking because we are living in a very, very fragile, dangerous world. And we need men and women of prayer to live with the presence and love of God in their hearts. And so my message to you pupils, first of all, is take up the opportunities that you have here in the school to pray. They are there. Morning and evening prayers in your houses, they're wonderful moments. I do miss coming round the houses in the evenings to see you and to pray with you. A moment to start the day, to finish the day by raising your heart and mind to God. And during the week, you've got those opportunities of the Rosary, Lexio Divina, Lent Stations of the Cross. They're all there. The Sunday Mass in the Abbey Church and on great days like this is a really strong moment in the week when the school community gathers to pray to encounter Christ. And so I, of course, take this opportunity of thanking, congratulating the choir, the servers, the readers, and so many others who take an active part in making it the strong moment in the week that it is. Those are real moments of prayer so think about those for next academic year. But each one of us here is called to bring the love, beauty, peace of Christ in our hearts to others. We're all called to allow others to do the same. And I think that is also a way of praying. And again, the opportunities 
are there all the time. I know we're itching to get to, to our lunches or picnics, whatever they might be with this weather, I don't know. But let me just give you two examples of what I really mean. The first is one of the soup runs. I, I took the soup run for m many years in Bath. And this was a hot summer's evening. I mean, it really was a, one of those beautiful summer's day in England. Really treasure them. Bright and sunny. I arrived in Bath with two boys from the sixth form. And on this occasion, there were really huge numbers there wanting soup, coffee, sandwiches, cakes. Well, after about half an hour, the majority had left. Some with a few sandwiches and cakes stuffed in their pockets. The food, the soup, the coffee had all been consumed and the organizers from one of the Bath Catholic churches were all beginning to pack up. These two boys, my role was always to step back a little bit and just to allow the pupils to, to do what needed to be done, but also there to make sure that, you know, they, they were safe. That was really important. And so these two boys continued to talk to a little group of the homeless there. Well, there was no way I was going to interrupt and tell them it was time to get back home. That was a real moment of grace and prayer. These two young men were sharing and bringing to the homeless the love, beauty, and friendship of Christ to others. The homeless listened to them, and they in turn listened to what the homeless had to say to them. Well, when we left and made our way back to downside in the car, the three of us were sort of profoundly moved by this experience. Few words were spoken. Well, those two boys had been instruments of God's love. They had responded with generosity, and that was a moment of prayer. My second example is, and of course I have to mention Chile, changed my life. Um, this was Christmas 2019. I spent the last two weeks of December of that year in Santiago with the Mankewe Apostolic Movement. I was there to help with the Christmas ceremonies and to take part in a wedding. I have to say, I still can't quite get over celebrating Christmas Midnight Mass. It was at 9 p.m., but in the open air, as I'm so used to cold, dark, wet Christmas nights at Downside. Well, on Boxing Day, I visited San Lorenzo School in a poor part of the city, Recoleta, and I was taken to visit three different places on the parish. My third visit was to a young family, the young mother and her recently born baby, born at 27 weeks, had just come back from hospital. The tiny baby lay in a cot in the small bedroom with an oxygen mask. The father came from his nearby workshop round the corner to greet me, as did the, brother, uh, the brothers of the little baby, Santiago, who was then aged seven, and Daniel, aged five. But what I experienced in this small house was the love, joy of God's love. Both parents and both boys, as well as the tiny girl lying in her cot, called Milagros Esperanza, Miracles Hope, just radiated joy, love and peace. Just they had a beautiful smile on their faces and those smiles said so much more than words. They were the love of God that was in their hearts. 
And so I was profoundly moved and grateful for having been able to share with that wonderful family their joy, their peace and love that lived in their hearts. And I do keep in contact with the oblate from the Mankewe Apostolic Movement, and she, she is alive, and it was difficult during the uh, pandemic, but she is as live as far as I know. Um, so this young family, amidst a tremendous difficulty and suffering, just shared their friendship and love. And that, I think, is a real moment of prayer, grace, and joy uh, that we can all be involved in. So my message to you all is pray. Open your hearts to God's redeeming love. As St. Paul says in his letter to the Colossians, be persevering in your prayers and be thankful as you stay awake to pray. So let me conclude with those beautiful words of blessing from the book of Numbers. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord show you his face and bring you all peace. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Father James. And we now come to our last um, award, and I've just got to make sure that I have... Yes, I have got. So our final awards are the um, Gregorian, Gregorian medals, uh, and I'm going to be awarding two this year, um, as we have in, in recent years. The first goes to uh, a, a girl... Um, whose outstanding commitment, sustained hard work, exemplary reliability and distinguished contributions to the classroom and the choir stalls and on the sports pitches have been clear to see, for all to see, alongside her leadership of her house. And um, there's a tremendous sense of fun about her approach to all that she does. She puts the needs of others before herself and develops the talents of those in her team. She has embraced our Benedictine values particularly humility. She's an extraordinarily talented musician, but is extremely modest and grounded, never thrusting herself forward, but using her gift to serve the community, singing in mass, other services, and concerts without expectation of anything return, in return. The win first winner is Beth Metten. The other recipient is a, a person who's grown enormously in confidence since joining Downside in year nine. Um, he has been an outstanding head of house. He's committed and willing to help others and has brought out the best in the leadership team, in his leadership team. In this regard, he has helped organize house music quizzes, team building games, and helped the house parents even with dorm cleanliness. He's shown a rare gift for bringing out the best in individuals, has been generous with his time and utterly selfless. He's also been a leader in chaplaincy of the St. Luke's community. He's worked closely with Father James and Father Michael, organising bidding prayers, readers, and the offertory procession. As a sixth form music scholar, he's been a senior percussion member and drummer in, the eight, musical, in eight musical groups. He's contributed to the concert band. He's been second in command of the Royal Navy. Uh, he uh, has gained his gold at Duke of Edinburgh and completed ten tours. Uh, he's also played a key role in the second teams for rugby, hockey and cricket. And that recipient is Angus Christie. Thank you.
We will be ending uh, with our hymn, but before we do, uh, these, these events don't happen just by themselves, and I just want to extend thank you to uh, Katie Walker and Laura Cray for all the organization that was behind this. So thank you to them, and I think they need a round of applause. So uh, uh, we've been in here a long time. I'm sorry that it has been quite so long, but uh, we're going to end with a, a rousing hymn. And hopefully the, we've kept you from the rain. Um, we haven't waited for the rain to fall, I hope. But anyway, let's stand and sing. <laughs>